Welcome back, Nick and Lex here. Thank you so much for joining me to another episode of Music with Nick. So today we're gonna to do something a little bit different. We got this request from Tao. Thank you so much, Tao, for this marathon request. And he said, just for fun, let's, you know, kick it up a notch. We have been doing so much 60s, 70s, and 80s stuff. Let's do some 90s stuff to today. So we're gonna do, we're gonna focus on two bands today. One is called Shelter. We're gonna do one song. I'm gonna do three songs of Curb Dog from the 90s. Now this, these two bands never really uh, like got the stardom they deserve, but we're gonna cover them anyways because that's what we do on this channel. We give everybody a chance, every band and every style of music, okay? So um, if you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. It really does help out the growth of the channel and, you know, and me and Alexia personally, you know, so thank you so much. Also, everybody who's watching, thank you for being there and, you know, commenting on the videos, liking the videos, disliking the videos, whatever you'd like to do, it's all good, you know? Um, so yeah, but thank you, Tao, for this request. So let's just read off the uh, the songs we're gonna do. We're gonna do by the band Curb Dog. This is from the same album. This is 1994. Three songs from Curb Dog. We're gonna do Dry Riser. We're gonna do Clock. We're gonna do Earthworks. Uh huh. And then we're gonna do the band Shelter. We're gonna do Message of the Bag Bagawat. Bagawat. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. But yes. So um. So let's uh. Let's strap in. Let's get ready. Thank you so much, everyone, for supporting the channel once more. And let's get going. All right. Cool. Okay. So let's start with Curb Dog Dry Riser. Here we go. Okay, guys. So guess what? So I was 20 seconds in the into the song, and suddenly the phone lights up, and it's Alexa, and it's like I'm locked outside. I can't get in. Um, okay. So I had to say, hey, I'm. Uh, but goodbye and uh, so I'm, I'm just gonna edit it out because I it was literally just 20 seconds that I was listening to the song So let's just start over and start where I uh, so I know the first seconds of the song That's it basically, but just let's start over and here we go So yeah, it definitely has, it screams 90s all. I mean, it's so crazy because I, mean, I remember being a certain age and, and, and I, I was living through that time, but I was just, I guess, too too young. Uh, but I, I remember everybody was dressing up differently and I was in Mexico at the time. So, um, but even there, you could see a little bit of the, you know, the grunge thing and and in and, and school, everybody was listening to Nirvana and, uh, you know, and, and, and Pearl Jam and, and Smashing Pumpkins. And it was a great time. And it, even like I remember 1994, I was already listening to, um, Meta was it Metallica already? And then they released Load. And I was like, and he sounds exactly like James here a little bit. Um, just that, mm, you know, that that sound that 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 way of singing and it is more like an alternative but also the new metal bands started to come in and heavy metal was totally like uh ignored for for 
almost like a decade, you know. So um, what a what a weird time, but also a great time, you know, because I mean, it is, you know, being young and, you know, being like, I don't know, I was, I don't know how old I was, but I was very, very, very chiquito. Okay, so let's continue. This is a great, this is a great request. Thank you. Thank you, Chow. And it's just like that, you know, no solos, just straight, you know, let's go. So yeah, it does remind me a lot of Creed. It reminds me a little bit of Smashing, um, well, Smashing Pumpkins I already mentioned, but uh, Stone Temple Pilots, maybe a little bit heavier than Stone Temple Pilots and Creed, but it has that, you know, it's just like straight up distortion, loud. Like I said, no solos whatsoever. Um, it was just a different time. It was more like everybody was, you know, like playing in shorts and, baseball hats and it was just a crazy different time i mean compared to the glam and the, the you know the spandex and the long hair and everybody had like short hair all of a sudden black fingernails and you know it was just so different i don't know like what do you guys think like you guys that listen to i mean we have subscribers from all ages we have you know people's in their 60s and their 70s and their 50s and their 40s so where were you at that time like did you listen to grunge or were you more into like your own stuff like rush or were you listening still to zeppelin or yes or genesis or were you going along with the music like i i mean at that time i didn't really know what to listen to i didn't really have a favorite band because it was just getting into music i mean i had already listened to a lot of pink floyd and zeppelin and that were my go-to's but i was also very accepting of like pearl jam nirvana not everything by nirvana but basically i i guess i listened to a lot of guns and roses never mind by nirvana smashing pumpkins um 
Ellis and Chains. I guess I got into that later, even though they're one of my favorite like grunge or alternative band now. But there was Weezer, Green Day, Offspring. Um, all that stuff was like being heard in school and it was a good time. So this is super new to me, but it has that sound, that typical 90s sound. Okay, same album, same year, song, clock. Here we go. Exactly like James Hetfield when he does those hair, you know that that's the. What I'm like right now, what I'm going through a little bit, it's maybe you've felt that before when you listen and when you listen to your, I'm sure you do when you listen to the music that when you were like, you know, in your teens and stuff, 
And I was just like, wow, I remember, like, I didn't even know how to play. And then every year was so long, like, it was just like, I just remember school years were so long, there was so much happening. And um, it was just different, man. And now I feel time totally different. Like, these last two years have been just like, maybe because of COVID, I don't know. But um, it was just so different. And sometimes I feel like this warped memory. Like, I don't really remember when what happened, what year. Like, when did I start playing guitar? And, like, who was I with? Or who was I friends with? Or it's so weird. It's so weird when you listen to music that it takes you right back like a time machine. Um, but this is very good. I'm really enjoying this. It is, I mean, it is what it is. It's not music that I listen to. Um, but it is a cool tool to go back to that time because you feel right back in the 90s and i was like wow what was i doing in the 90s you know and how long the 90s were i feel if i look back to the like 2010s that was like boom but also i mean i can say that i met alexia in 2010 and it was the longest time to 2020 i mean We've been together for now for 13 years now, and it was a long time. I mean, if I look back and all the pictures we've taken and the millions of things we've did, but uh, it's just like, I guess your childhood is the longest period, that one that takes the longest to get to te the teenage years. And then the teenage years also take so long and you're developing and you're learning all this stuff and you go through all these things in your life and all these feelings of i don't know it's so weird <laughs> and then when you're an adult everything is just like very fast you just live life very quickly and every day is like just like this you know because you have responsibilities you work and and when you're a child you just like kind of like figure things out and you just play and you're just like everything seems endless isn't that crazy okay i'm so off topic but i mean i guess that was music that music does and yeah okay now let's go with the third song this is called earth works <laughs> to say the riffing of this band is exquisite the drumming the bass the bass and doo -doo 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 -doo. i mean it's not often you hear a song with a bass intro it's very rare um so tao i do appreciate this music and it's actually taking me on a journey so you're you know you got what you wanted you know <laughs> to take us back to the 90s can you hear that that's the house breaking apart. I'm just kidding. It's something, I guess it's the wind or something. Let's continue.
Okay, so now we know about curb dog. So yeah, I mean, it does feel just like straightforward. Like I can't call it metal. It sounds alternative. It sounds just, I don't know. It's like, and I can't even think about because the first thing that I did when I grabbed the guitar is learn basically to play like licks, like and I was like, of course, like, like doing that. But I was like, I could not imagine not laying a solo on my track. Like whatever I play, it's so important. I mean, the lead guitar for me as a guitar player. And um, and I started to play after this came out. I'm sure I started to play like. If I remember correctly, maybe 2000, 2002, 2003, something like that. Um, that's the first time I picked up the guitar. And, uh, but I was like into different stuff. I was like, I n was never like into alternative, uh, like, or grunge. I mean, I was listening to it, but it wasn't like my music of choice. I was always into Iron Maiden. I was always 10 years behind. So always 10 years behind, I was listening to Zeppelin, and then I was listening to Iron Maiden, Judas Priest. So that's why I, was, I wanted to learn how to play lead or Ingwe Malmsteen. And uh, so I was, I mean, I was listening to what everybody was listening, but I was also in my spare time alone, I was listening to older music. So, yeah, so, so I was not learning this music. This music was, I guess, I don't know. I was just like not into it at the time. I do remember that I loved Pearl Jam, the f the first album, and stuff like that. And um, but they do had they did have solos and stuff. Or Guns N' Roses slash those solos like November Rain or Estranged or you know uh, Knocking on Heaven's Door. I remember was one of the first solos that I learned, and that was also ninety like one or something. But well. Um, now we're going to go with the band Shelter. Let's see what they have in store for us. And uh, this is from the... Um, let's see what year this is. Holy crow. Okay, give me a second. This is a compilation album. Let me, let me look for this real quick. So Shelter. It's, because it said 2018. I'm like, no, this can't be correct. So the message... Of the Bag Bagawat. Let's see. Okay. Give mm, me one second. Message of the Bagawat. Let's look for it here. I just want to know, you know. Aha, uh -huh, there it is. That's the real one. That's the one we want to listen to. I mean, I do appreciate compilation records, but they're like, they're off. Okay, so this is from the album Mantra, 1995. Message of the Bhagavad is the opening number. Let's go.
Perfect. So three things that I love. Okay, so first, okay. So first, three things that I love. Heavy riffing, guitar solos, and rap. And when I say I love rap, I do love rap because I grew up with rap. Um, Run DMC. Um, and I met them. Uh, that's why I was a rapper uh, or rapper or listener. Because I did meet Run DMC through my dad. And they gave me like this, their f first LP or something or second, I don't know. Um, um, Raising Hell. And they put like uh, Nick Stay in School. Really cool. And I met them and I didn't know what they were saying. It was just like really nice to me. And I was a little like midget um, kid. And uh, and I just love their music for as long as I can remember. And I listened to Beastie Boys, of course, and um, uh, Fat Boys, um, Public Enemy. And this reminded me more of Public Enemy a little bit. Public Enemy. And of course, then MC Hammer, which is not really rap, but it is. And, you know, all the stuff that came after Technotronic, Vanilla Eyes, Milli Vanilli, I met those guys too, even though they were the fake guys, just the dancers. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so I just, I've always had a soft spot for rap. Now, the gangster rap, I never got into too much because I was already into Led Zeppelin at the time. But I did listen to Snoop Dogg for a while because a good friend of mine in school was so he lent me that uh that first record and i was kind of like okay that's cool but i was not ne i it never went further but here it goes rage against the machine was a, a very very important record in my life and it's also the the one that i uh because of that i i uh, met basically i got in touch with metallica the first record that you know that story that i told you that he saw me listening to rage and he's like hey let's switch you know justice for all and i gave him rage against the machine and that's when i you know my head uh, blew off but yeah i love this this was really cool the whole like riffing the rapping um and the whole uh, the solo and it was really cool i wish um tao would have chosen more of this but i mean you know he I'm sure he wanted to listen to the ones that he wanted to listen to. All three songs were great in their own right. Um, and it was a good time. It was a good time. I had a really good good time looking back and thinking back. And and yes, it did sound a lot like James Hetfield. I have to like stick to my guns. Um, maybe that was a factor that they were not as successful because maybe it was like more of a copy of James Hetfield's style without being Metallica. I don't know. But the riffing was great. I mean, the, overall, the music of um, um, Curb, Dog, Curb Dog was great, you know. But maybe they would have, like, maybe they should have done something. Uh, you know, even those solos where they were just holding the chord, like, you know, that was Nirvana was doing that. Um, maybe that would have helped, but I don't know. I'm not anybody who, to criticize what they, if they wanted to record it exactly the way they recorded it, that's their, you know, that's what they wanted to do. So who am I to say? But um, I'm kind of bummed that they didn't get the recognition they deserved. And, but, you know, it's hard to make it in the music business. Um, um, I guess now it's so different because... The music business is not what it was. I mean, it's just... Today, the music business is almost like a little bit of a joke because everybody who's famous is just like... It's just imagery. It's just image, videos, crazy colors, crazy auto-tuning, crazy... Everything crazy. Um, disgusting lyrics, disgusting imagery of what it is to be a rock star. You see kids... 13 year old kids driving Lamborghinis. It's just ridiculous. It's just disgusting. Um, thankfully, there are still some artists that do have talent, you know, that do um, appear on YouTube playing guitar like, for, like you know, uh, masters, true masters that go to school, that study music, that, you know, we have Steven Wilson who still plays 
music like um like the bands of 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 sev- the 70s and 80s and the 60s you know but all this other like dare I say shit that comes out is just disgusting and it's not I don't consider it music I consider it um uh just a joke it's a joke and uh, but I we could talk about this I think I should do a live and we, we should talk about today's situation of music the no attention span the the video after the video the swiping and swiping and, and and I was just thinking about that and I, I thank you Tao because I was taken back to where I was not a slave of my phone you know and uh, and that was great that was a great time you know when I had my own when I was not being fed politics and and, and 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 this shooting and this person died and it was still more like just live your day you know you know i don't have to know everything that happens in the world in one day you know that's why maybe uh, our days are shorter because there's so much information and this person is boxing this person and this person just made a million and this person just lost a billion and this actor passed away and this actor uh, got in a fight on twitter and it's just so much shit that we don't need to know you know that's the problem uh with today so uh, it's it's nice to be taken back to the 80s or the 90s or or you know the whatever time you lived in and were more free you know so thank you so much Tao, for this this was awesome i did like the music it's not like i said not my favorite kind of music but i did have fun and I, that that's what we all want to do here have fun and relive moments you know of happiness and that's what this channel is all about so thank you so much for being here and i hope to see you in the next one take care